Probably like the first few times. Sorry? Probably like the first few times. The dog did it. So right. Yeah. But and not necessarily it. every time. Yeah. And then the dog. Twice. So they tested it on dogs, they did it on me twice. And then the dog another <laughs> <laughs> and, and went went out. And and so this is also equivalent to us. I mean, you know, if we're given a carrot, more type of thing and we, we get the stretch, do we do it? So it's the same type of principle there. So twice. Um, and then you don't anymore. So um, transform, transformational, sorry, transactional leadership has basically its limitations in the industry. Um, the next one, yeah, is what I'd like to show you, transformational leadership. Um, so this one is the one that we're always aiming for in the um, top teams. Um, it basically describes someone who has a clear vision of where he wants to go and the group's goals. Um, he has a passion for the task and the ability to inspire the rest of the group such that all the group feels charged and willing to actually jump off the cliff or whatever he wants to do or wherever he wants to go. And you see what we've put at the end there is the, the money trick. Because that's in true transformational leadership what that team can achieve. So high performance teams operate in transformational leadership. So without going into too much more detail, I want to give you some examples I have. <coughs> From industry and uh, from what I've uh, what I've got um, through my uh, experience of times. The first one is is and I, I just heard that he was actually here, Tony Fernandez. That's not Tony Fernandez. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Tony Fernandez to me is a very inspirational leader. Um, CEO of Air Asia. Uh, he. Uh, uh, I'm sure he explained that he, he rescued uh, a, a Air Asia bankrupt company for, for, for one ringgit. Um, so, what was his motto? What was his dream? Uh, sorry, Colin. What was um, his goal basically for the company? What did he say as their vision or say? Do you remember? What did he say? Dream the impossible, believe the unbelievable, and never say no for an answer. So three. Dream the impossible, believe the unbelievable, and never take no for an answer. What a vision, eh? You could knock down mountains with that, wouldn't you? How inspiring is that to hear from your CEO? So this particular lady, um, and Tony was doing a, a presentation uh, that I had the uh, honor to actually be present at, um, came, up to, um, came up to Tony um, and said, um, I, well, sorry, back, back to Tony though in, in his leadership, yeah, there's one, one thing I want to actually go on, which was um, the Air Asia uh, disaster um, that uh, unfortunately, uh, was on the news. Um, Tony actually came out and he said, I am the leader of this company. I take full responsibility. That is why I'm here. I'm not running away from my obligations, even though we don't know at that time what's wrong. The passengers were on my aircraft, and I have to take full responsibility for that. That's a leader. That's a leader who accepts anything that is from his company, um, no matter what. Um, so that, and that's the inspiration that you get from, from Tony. But I want to focus basically on uh, this lady, uh, Chanaporn Rogia. She started as a flight attendant uh, with AirAsia, and um, she was dreaming the impossible. She said, she met with Tony and she said, I'd like to, to study, um, to be um, a uh, pilot. What do you think about it, Tony? 
He said, believe the unbelievable and never say no for answer. Come back and see me in three years, and if you've got it, then I'll employ you. She came back in three years. She had a pilot's license. And she went on to be the first woman captain uh, of Air Asia. And always dreaming the impossible, she came back afterwards and she said, Tony, people say to me I, I look quite pretty. <laughs> nice hairstyle, nice figure and what have you. I think I'd like to enter into Miss Asia. Tony said, finally mate, go ahead and do it. She did. Um, she eventually became Miss Thailand. Um, and she went on to be the finalist in the Miss Universe pageant. And Tony, Tony ends his presentation with this, and I quote, while other airlines can talk about their cabin crew and staff, we are the only airline in Asia that can tell and boast that Miss Thailand is flying the plane. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I'd encourage everybody to dream the impossible, believe the unbelievable, and never take no for an And I think that's a great vision statement. The second one, um, I'm sure you all know it, is a transformational leader. In his own right, Jack Ma, uh, in 1999, he um, founded Alibaba, started off with a small team of friends. Uh, if we fast forward now, 15 years today, uh, Alibaba's IPO raised more than 20 billion US dollars, and it made Jack Ma the richest man in China. So while uh, he could be uh, the case of yeah, right place at right time, I think he definitely was, uh, his success boiled down to his absolute unique style of leadership. Um, and it's, uh, uh, this one earned in the uh, nickname Crazy Mark. <laughs> I think you know why. Um, Jack has definitely a keen eye for talent. And what he did was, whilst he was building Alibaba, he knew his own limits. He knew what he was good at and what he was yet. So he absolutely made sure um, that he surrounded himself with smart and capable, innovative people, uh, and he trusted with them in the development, basically, of the company. Uh, he believed the customers come first, employees are second, and the shareholders are third. Because uh, the customers bring in the money, the employees drive the vision, and the shareholders are the first to run uh, when the financial crisis. And I think very, very astute comments. But more importantly, Jack Ma understood um, that what he had accomplished is restricted by his ability to lead and influence others. Um, the greater the impact he wanted to make, the greater his personal influence needed to be. And with that, he incorporated his larger-than-life personality into Alibaba's whole culture. Jack is energetic, as we, as I said, he's charismatic. And he, the other thing, coming back to this one, uh, this this one here, he's not afraid to make fun of himself. I think that that's key. That uh, on the 10th <coughs> anniversary, um, he dressed himself up in in leather. He had the Mohican wig. He put on lipstick um, and uh, a, 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 a ring uh, through his uh, nose, and he sang the Elton John's uh, song, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Which leader of such a company would do that? Uh, so he was very personal. So, um, this is not only about great heroes in history, um, politicians and businessmen who are leaders in this world. Besides the transformational leadership, leadership can be taken on by anybody um, within an organization. It doesn't have to be big things that are uh, encompassed. It can be more smaller things. And I'd like to highlight to you, certainly within Bosch, um, within our associates, 
including some of the uh, ex SNU guys. Those guys have created positive change within um, within Bosch. But first, I, I think I need to give you some short information about Bosch because everybody thinks that this is our company. <laughs> um, so um, definitely, this is what we're known by fridges. It's the old um, uh, 60s style fridge there, and the power tools, uh, which are um, designed and developed and manufactured in Malaysia. Um, the fridges are not. So that's the consumer goods business. But um, Bosch is a global uh, organization. We have a turnover last year of, um, sorry, 2013, we've not given 14 yet, 46 billion euros. 46 billion euros. Um, and we had uh, 280,000 employees worldwide. So that gives you an example of where how large we are. We took over the um, fridges. So this used to be a joint venture between Siemens and Bosch, 50 50. Uh, we took that over completely last year. And we also integrated uh, ZFLS, which is a um, it's, it's Sun Fabric Link System, good German. But what it means is the um, steering system. And we manufacture those in Malaysia. Uh, we took those over 100%. So that gives us around 350,000 associates worldwide um, this, this year. Um, so, mobility solutions 60% of our turnover is with mobility solutions. Who's got a car or drives a car? Or a few more. Have you ever lifted a bonnet of a car? The, the place where the engine is. If you lift a, every, a bonnet of any car, you will see the, this, 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 this symbol here. We're not allowed to put Bosch, but we can put the symbol. So Bosch is in every, every vehicle. Toyota, Honda, all the Japanese, Korea. Um, that's our biggest uh, turnover, 60% of the uh, Industrial technology. Um, We'll move on to energy and building technology and consumer goods. So I, I think that that doesn't really say much to you, apart from this wonderful thing here. Do you know what this is? A robotic lawnmower. <laughs> so you put that on the ground, you define where it's actually got to cut, and it will find its own way and cut the, the lawn for you whilst you're drinking your Singapore sling off. Um, so that's innovation from Bosch, where we are. Um, so this is um, our mobility um, division. It's the EV charging stations, which are distributed somewhere around Singapore. We got the um, award for providing the infrastructure um, and the city's uh, mobility software. In our energy and building technology, um, this is the sector for security systems. Anybody go to the cameras that are watching you at Changi Airport? No, they are for watching <laughs> Not just at Changi, though, but at Changi, all of the, the security cameras there are by Bosch. And what we also do is, uh, if you go into, uh, uh, I forget the hotels, but most of the hotels in um, Singapore have those, you know the big column of speakers that come down? Um, the, the fan speakers we call them. Uh, very small, but they're made up of, of different columns. If you see an EV on that, that stands for Electro Voice. That's another product uh, from Bosch. That's what we make speakers, systems as well. Um, so, anybody see the crane dance at Sentosa? The crane dance? No? <laughs> Guys, get yourself. <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously too busy working hard, and it's good to see. But if you do, that is all powered by Bosch. Powered by Bosch hydraulic systems that lift basically the crane and allow it to look like it's dancing. We also do the uh, barrage, marina barrage, you know, the, the, the flood system. All that flood system gating, so the big hydraulic lifts and gates, is done by Bosch. Um, so, where are we in Asia? 
we have about um, 6,700 employees, ASEAN wide. We made a turnover of uh, around 700 million euros in 2014. And we're, as, um, as your good colleague introduced me, we are in each of the 10 ASEAN countries with either some manufacturing um, or sales offices or whatnot. Uh, the automotive ones are Vietnam, Thailand, um, and Indonesia. We just opened last year in Indonesia a production uh, plant for automotive as well. So this is our biggest growth, one of, one of the biggest growth regions um, for in the world for Bosch. Uh, we intend to stay uh, for a lot longer. Uh, the company is 128 years old. Um, so, um, and I was, I was, I was, I was on the panel when was it last week or the week before, uh, MT Nielsen, and I was sat next door to Uber, you know, Uber the taxi guys, and Zara, two very, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> um, I am, um, two very big internet companies, and there was Bosch sat in the middle, and I thought, hmm, yes, am I a traditional or am I a um, a, a, a dinosaur amongst these two. But actually when we got talking, um, Bosch, it's technology that we have. It, it, in every second handphone is a sensor from Bosch. So, you know, yes we've been around, but we've managed to migrate our technology, innovate, um, to actually make sure that we're here for the next 125 years as well. So, I was talking about um, um, everyday leaders. Let me introduce you to um, one that we have in the company, uh, just exactly so, Piram. Piram Hay is our marketing colleague and communications in Myanmar. One day he was walking on the street and he thought, how can I get the Bosch branding out there? Apart from billboards, apart from paying the expensive billboards, what is it I can do? And he saw this wall and he thought, wow, that would look good if it was painted. Uh, and if we could put the signage on the top, and if we could have solar panel lighting so it's lit up there on the evening as well. Um, and Purim did that. He didn't have a budget, basically, for the marketing, um, but he did it on a very, very low budget. 50,000 cars pass this uh, intersection on a daily basis. Um, so it resulted in a 234 square meter illuminated sign, which is actually four times cheaper than a billboard, you'd put it a silver billboard on. So uh, there was somebody who had the initiative, had the leadership, and actually went with it and did it. And also, if you go to uh, Cambodia, you'll see these wonderful tuk tuks driving around. Uh, and Emperor has also managed to put some branding in the back of tuk tuks. Uh, again, He's one of our, what we call, everyday leaders. Um, and these results that he's achieved, you can see behind me. But also similarly, we have these leaders within our office here in Singapore. Um, and I'd like to just show you a few of them. Um, they're everyday leaders which drive our success. Uh, talented SMU graduates um, among the midst to strive to make a difference in their everyday 